In this video, I'm going to look at machine translation using SAP Translation Hub. This is not new functionality. It actually came in in the 2206 release. And I've already done a video on using that for SAP Companion help content. But here I'm going to look at static translations of learning content, that is simulations and books and book pages. Because there's a couple of things that typically tend to trip people up. So I have in here a group that I'm going to translate the contents of. That's the first important thing to understand. Put everything you want translated into a particular group and we'll translate that group and all of its contents. So this is a group called sales order entry and I have just one simulation in it called creating a sales order to keep it short. So first thing that you need to do is you need to insert a special type of object inside the group that contains the content to be translated. So here I'm going to select sales order entry as the group and I'm going to create a new text unit. I'm creating a new text unit. I'm going to call it translation information. Now, the name here isn't particularly important, but what is important is the document type needs to be translation information. And that's why I typically use the same name here, so I know exactly what this text unit is. But it's basically a text unit. You're going to do nothing with it, but there must be a text unit of document type translation information inside the group that you want to translate. So I'll just click OK here and it will create that object for me and I can now see it here. I'm going to do nothing with it. It's used for internal purposes and we'll see what it does in a minute. So now I'm ready to translate this content. So I'm going to select this group again and go to Tools, Translation, Machine Translation. And that comes up with a dialog box that wants me to enter my credentials for the translation. Now, when this functionality was first released, it was basically a paid service. You needed a subscription to SAP Translation Hub. In the 2305 release, Translation Hub was basically bundled free with SAP Enable Now. So you no longer need your own subscription to it. If you want to use the free subscription, make sure you have Use Default Credentials selected. This is going to give you free translation. If you have your own SAP Translation Hub subscription and you want to still use that for whatever purposes, for monitoring of how much usage you've got of it or anything else, then you would enter the service URL, token URL, client ID and client secret that were given to you when you first signed up. For here, I'm going to use the default credentials just to show you how that works. Click OK. And the first thing that will do is prompt me to select the language or languages I want to translate my content into. You'll see there's an option here that says show all languages. And I currently do not have this selected. This is the default. And what it means is it's only going to show you those languages that are supported by SAP Translation Hub. If you select show all languages, it will list all languages supported by SAP Enable Now which is a bigger list than those supported by Translation Hub. But for here, I'm in English at the moment, and I want to translate it into German. So I'll select German here. I can select multiple languages to translate in multiple languages at the same time by holding down the Control key and then clicking Additional Languages. Here, I only want German, so I'll select that. If I select only object properties, then it's only going to translate stuff that's in the property sheet here, like the short description, long description, and other things. Um, I'll skip these other couple of settings here. I'll come back to them. I have an option here to say translate objects with status X and change status of translated objects to whatever. So if I build my content and I set them to have a status of ready for translation, I can select in translate objects with status to say only choose ones that have a status of ready for translation and change the status of them to translated once that's been done. For now, I'm not using statuses. I'll just leave those as is. So I'll click OK here. Now, the first thing it does, it's going to duplicate this entire group. It's going to duplicate it for me. I don't need to duplicate in advance, which I'd need to do if I was sending it out for external translation. So it creates those for me. You can see I've already got that group down here now. That's what it's created. And then it translates them. Once it translates them, the dialog box will close and you can see the finished results in here. 
So now I have a new group called Kunden Auftragus Fassung, which is apparently German for sales order entry. And inside that I have my simulation and I also have a new copy of translation information. Now it's important to notice that it will create this new group within the same parent group of the group you translated. So I selected sales order entry for translation. Its parent is this demonstrations group. So this new group, Kundenauftragsfassung, has been created in, in demonstrations as well. So that's the basics of the translation. This has now been done. And if I go and look in that simulation, what I will see is that this content has been translated. I'll select my first um, explanation bubble here and you can see that that's all been translated for me. And everything's been translated. I've got my, where I've inserted a partial screenshot and I gave that a particular title in English, that title's been translated. It will translate everything. But if I go down through here some more, this has been translated and then this has been translated and when I select this one this has not been translated this is still in English why has this happened this is because if I look down here on the properties sheet for my demo bubble and my practice bubble this property here of translate manually is not selected this is because what you're seeing in here this click on the manage sales order tile is what we call template text. It's what's being captured from the recording dictionary. And I told it when I translated stuff, don't bother translating stuff that's in the recording dictionary. Just to show you this particular point. So if you see stuff that's not been translated, it's because it's been taken from the recording dictionary and there is a translation in the recording dictionary. Unfortunately, it doesn't automatically apply those. So, Note that step four. We'll come back to this one. I'll close this down now. And what I'll do now is I'm going to retranslate these things and we'll get it to translate that recording dictionary text as well. So if I go back to tools, translation, machine translation, I've got my authorization again, click OK. And then here, if you remember this dialog box, I'm still going to translate it into German. And it's this one here include generated project texts. This is basically saying if it was brought in from the recording dictionary and you've not edited it during editing, then you also want to translate that text. So anything that has translate manually selected, it's also going to include those. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to retranslate everything, which is just this one simulation, but now I'm going to give it this option here as well. So I click OK. Now, when it does that, important thing to note, it's already taken a copy of this stuff. It knows it has a copy, so it doesn't need to create a new copy. It's going to use the existing copy and update that. So it's updated this same object for me, this Kunden Auftrag Anlegen. And if I go into that now and go back to step four, I can see now that it has translated that. Even though that was template text, and if I look down here, I've still got translate manually is not selected, but it has translated it because of that option. Now I'm going to show you one last thing about this. Notice here that although it says klicken Sie auf die Kachel, it's still left manage sales orders in English. That's because that's the object name and that ties up with what's on the screen. And typically you would not want to translate that because it could be confusing for your users who then see it say manage sales orders in German and we'll see what that translation is in a minute and the screen in the simulation still says manage sales orders in English. So it's not necessarily something you'd always want to do unless you're going to swap the screens out as well which we're not going to look at doing but let's assume that that's our final goal. So I'm going to close this down again. Now before I retranslate this again and select that last option I'm going to show you one more interesting thing with this. I'm going to take this simulation and say, well, I don't really want it here, and I'm really going to put that somewhere else. So I can take this simulation. I'm just going to drop it into my ready for review group here. Okay, so it's no longer where it was. It's no longer in my group here. 
that has this translation information object in it. But SAP Enable Now is clever enough to know to find that object when it needs to. So what I'm going to do here, just to prove what's happening, is I'm going to save all of these objects to the server. So you can see that the purple asterisk disappears and we're down to the green pencil for all of them. OK, so now we'll know if anything changes. So under Ready for Review, I've got my translated copy. My translation group has got nothing in it now apart from the translation information text unit. I'm going to leave that there, but I'm going to go back to my English one here, this sales order entry. I've got that selected. Once more, back to Tools, Translation, Machine Translation. And here I've got my authorization again. Click OK. Select German again. Select Include Generated Project Texts which is what we did last time, but also include control names. This is now the important one. This is the one that's going to say, OK, those object names in the recording, I want you to translate those as well. So I will leave that selected and I'll click OK. And let's see what it does now. It will retranslate everything. And you can already see that it's found the copy in here, Kunden Auftrag Anlegen, inside my Ready for Review group and it's changed that for me. It's also made some updates to this group and to this text unit because that's what's really tying everything together. But it, it managed to find that. It doesn't matter where I put that in my library, it's going to find it and it's going to translate that because it knows that this one is tied to this one and this is the one we've just retranslated. So now if I go into here, I will see if I go back down to step four, that it has actually translated the object name in here, which was manage sales orders, and now says Kunden Aufträger wir walten. Okay, so that is the German translation for manage sales orders. Hopefully. One last thing I'm going to show you though. If I now go and look at my S4 system, so bear that in mind, Kunden Aufträger wir walten. If I go and look at my S4 system, this is my S4 system in English. And if I go down to sales, I can see that the manage sales order tile is called manage sales orders. Now, if I switch my interface language in here, I come in here and say, yep, I want to see everything in German. Save. And now go back down to sales. I can see that this tile is in fact now called Kunden Aufträger Verwalten. So it has translated it correctly and it's using the exact same term in my translated simulation that is used in the actual system. This is because SAP Translation Hub uses exactly the same dictionaries as SAP uses for its S4 system and in fact for all of its other systems. So the point of all of this is the SAP Translation Hub and the machine translation in SAP Enable now using it has been trained using SAP content and it's going to use the appropriate terminology for that. If I go back into my simulation now, obviously my screenshot still says manage sales orders because that's a static image. And what I would need to do to get that changed is to basically re-record and capture new screens or just manually capture those screens and then swap them out. So if I really wanted everything to be exact. But that is basically in a nutshell how the machine translation works and how to get it to change everything. Key takeaways from this, make sure that you create a translation information text unit with a document type of translation information and make sure that when you translate stuff, you are selecting the checkbox to translate the generated text that are coming from the recording dictionary and or the object names as well, depending on how much you really want to translate in this. So that's it. Hope you found that useful. If you did, please subscribe.